Good. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Season 3, Episode 26 of Motivate Me 313's podcast. We are officially live and ready to get the show on the road. Looking forward to another great conversation today. Today, we're going to be discussing how we can take advantage of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the people who are in the building today, starting off with the man in the back, uh, little big bro Yusuf Thabit, always on the ones and twos. We appreciate him and his support. He's rocking a Yale hoodie, even though he has no relations to Yale, but it's okay. It's all about a mindset, you know, and that's why I respect my brother Yusuf, right? To the right of me is our astound guest, Sheikh Mohammed and Mesmeri, go ahead and give him a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Honestly, um, I'm excited whenever a Sheikh is in the building because we get to learn. Uh, not only the audience gets to learn, but you know us as a panel gets to learn. Get to learn as well. So looking forward to inshallah to another great conversation where we can learn and uh, may this you know be something that we all can benefit from inshallah. And then to the left of me, if you guys are watching from home, uh, you got my sister, Abir. Uh, she decided to wear this literally the same matching Listen, colors as me. This is the male. second week in a row. Second week. And it's not like easy colors to match. Like, this, is, this is a random, you know. True. So what are, what are you doing? I mean, I could ask you the same thing, but we're going to keep it rolling. And then to the left of her, you got Sada, my other sister as well. She's in the building. And um, like a, me ahead. and the Sheikh are matching <laughs> with the beach. Uh, there you so. go. Hold on. There you go. There you go. So we got like a nice little color scheme going on today. Uh, so with that said, again, today's topic is about the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Inshallah, we're going to discuss how we can take advantage of it. Before we even do that, though, be sure to follow us on all of our socials. We got YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, all under Oz Media. You'll be able to listen to the show later on Apple and Spotify podcast under Oz Media. If you want to call in, you know, the Sheikh has spitting some facts as they like to say so. uh feel free to call in and um you know share your two cents share your thoughts the number is 313-306-1750 again 313-306-1750 shout out to the sponsors the balkan house juice box kahwa house bc adhesives specialty medical center and hanley international academy let's start off with hanley since we were talking about this you know we saw the sheikh um, he was at his son's basketball game at Huda um, uh, Middle School, and Hanley played Huda, and in that game, Huda beat Hanley. So, well, the first game we beat them by one point. There you go. I've been had to make and sure you mentioned that. The second, the actual. Game. The time where I was actually standing next to him, and I was like, "Oh, Sheikh, how are you doing?" Yeah, that was the second game when yeah, they ended up beating us. And beat us yeah. when we were there, when I was there, they won. Yeah. yeah that's good. See, so how the, motivation works, I guess. <laughs> the dua works. You know, whatever it is no, that you got. I think that's what it was. <laughs> I think no, it was. no, you. <laughs> Uh, it's just motivation. You got to push them to the max. It is yeah. true. That is true. Well, with that said, shout out to Hanley International Academy. And then we're going to officially get the show on the road. You know, Yusuf, you seem like a pretty smart man. What elementary slash middle school did you get promoted from? The one and only Hanley International Academy. Hanley International Academy is a school that treats every student and staff like their own family. It's even in their vision statement, educating your child like our own. Their location is 2400 Denton Street, Hamtramck, Michigan. Their phone number is 313-875-8888. The academics there are great. The athletics there are great. Thank you to the staff and administrators at Hanley for educating our leaders of tomorrow. All right, we're officially back with the Sheikh. You know, we joked around earlier. I was like, you know, his brother, which many of you may not know, um, is Dula. I mean, you know who he is, but I don't know if you know that they're brothers, and that is Dula Mula, uh, Abdullah Amen Smitty as well. So we appreciate him uh, for coming on the show. He was actually on our first episode of, of season three. And so now episode 26, alhamdulillah, we have Sheikh Mohammed. How are you? How's everything been with you, man? Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, the invite. What I like about this most is that you all are family. Thank you. It, it just you all coming together with this beautiful idea and sharing thoughts and, and just sitting together. It, it's, a, it's a beautiful feeling. It's a special feeling. And then you and your sister matching. That's, another, <laughs> <laughs> that's an add on, mashallah. <laughs> but, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Blessing. So, uh, you know, tell us, you know, how's life been for you? You know, I, I, you've, you've, uh, you are the, you spearheaded the Ummah organization. Um, I know you don't really like to give yourself a title, so I didn't want to say a specific Thanks. title because I actually I don't even know where it actually is the specific title. But, uh, you know, talk to us about Ummah organization. I mean, it, Subhanallah, it is amazing. I love what you guys are doing there. You know, I, you know, I have the chance to go, go there a couple times and. 
you know, the, the youth. I think that's the main thing. I think you're focusing a lot on the youth, and it's just a great place to be, especially for the youth. So tell us a little bit about Ummah organization. So, of course, I, I just serve Ummah. I'm just um, one of many other people that work uh, behind the scenes. Unfortunately, we get the credit, but there's a lot of people that make it what it is, and especially the attendees. They also give it a beautiful feel and a beautiful spirit. But the whole intention behind Ummah and Tayba, Tayba is like the mother organization that inshallah once we find the building, it falls onto that. Tayba means beautiful and pure. And Medina is called Tayba, the, the prophet city. Uh, the, the idea behind Ummah is to be at a central place mm. where it becomes a seeking hub. You have to feel uncomfortable to get there. And that was very intentional. Like I've had buildings given to me in Dearborn, I can't say where, for free. And you're talking about massive buildings. You can immediately get in, get to work instead of renting a space because renting is inconvenient. And because that goes against the vision that we've set, that it has to be a central place and it cannot be dominated by a specific culture mm. or a country of origin, um, we, we, we kept Southfield. So most of the people that you see in, at, at Ummah and you find them uh, in Southfield mm -hmm. at nighttime um, are people that drove at least 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So all that was intentional and I think that's what makes a space beautiful is that no one has this sense of entitlement. So and so everyone just comes in and they see their peers and friends and um, and I feel that that's what makes a lot of the youth feel comfortable. Um, I know I had a, in the last week I had a few complaints. There's, like, There's a lot of youth here. It looks like you're um, like the adults are uh, unwelcome to the space. I say, you know what? It's about time you feel what the youth felt mm. for a pretty long time. I think that deserves a round of applause, yeah. by the way, yeah. because that is the biggest thing for me. You know, and in Masagi that we grew up near, um, I, I still think that they need a little bit more work with the youth. But that's another conversation for another day. They are doing a better job, but continue on what you're saying. No, I'm just saying. So it, it's it's amazing that the youth gravitate towards that space. I hope we continue. But um, it's, it's, it's not only youth-centered, but I'm happy that youth are coming. And if, if, if it's working for them, then alhamdulillah, we're, we're, we're achieving our goals. It's a blessing. No, alhamdulillah. And it's like, you know, Ummah has become like that, you know, that new place to, it's like the, the new cool um, organization that people would like to go to. And then, of course, you got a sheikh that's like very relatable. You know, that's huge. I think that's the biggest thing is, is having a sheikh that people can relate to, you know, grew up in the same neighborhoods as us, you know, specifically, but just in general, someone that you can go to and talk to about anything. And you're, you understand, you know, what's going on in today's day and age. And obviously you are educated enough to what has happened in the past. So mashallah, you know, we appreciate you, appreciate you. You guys need to uh, stop praising me, but thank you. Okay. I appreciate, well, I appreciate the gotta, kind words. Gotta, and, a lot. and coming from a 26 year old, like, I'm not intimidated right now whatsoever. When before, like if we, like if I'm around a sheikh, like I'm like, oh my god, I have to be a certain way. But you're very approachable, and that's that's really great. Alhamdulillah. What do you want to be intimidating, by the way? I mean, I don't know if that was a compliment or not, man. Do you, or do you want to walk? <laughs> oh, Allah, I just want to no. be me. That's it. Yeah, and like no, it doesn't mean that like there's not because like sometimes obviously there's like still intimidation. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. She summed it up for me. <laughs> no, for sure, I was missing. I'm, I'm it just relaxing. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think. It, uh, I'm not in the mood of trying to prove something. You yeah. know, in the end, we have something simple to offer. People like it, alhamdulillah, they don't, may Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. It's, you get tired of trying to prove something. Mm. And if you just stick in your lane and try to what, just master whatever you feel comfortable doing, it just gives you a lot of comfort. And it just shows how uh, pure your intentions are. <laughs> Allah. Allah. But the, the Ummah um, Misgid or you know, center, I don't know, Ms. Gitz Just what we call it for now, space. Space, there you go. It reminds me of like the Dallas feeling in Texas, for sure, where it's mixed and there's not a specific um, country or origin that's taking it over, like you said before. So um, it, it just gives me that feel, for sure. So because you said Dallas, watch out. I just came from Dallas. I didn't have a good feeling. Oh, what, why? Where did no. you go, though? I went to, every, I went to you a went lot to of places. One? Okay. I, I, alhamdulillah, I have relationships with them. Michigan is unique. Okay. In a good way or a bad way? In a good way. Okay. So I haven't been to Ummah, but inshallah I'm going on Friday. So I haven't. Too. It's just what I've yeah. seen online and stuff. It's, 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 Are you serious? Uh, every it's Ramadan. Ramadan. Listen, serious. every Ramadan. one night you can't come? We're inshallah. coming Friday. Inshallah. How good is Dearborn where you can't come one It's night. not about Dearborn. It's about work and it's close. It's 20 minutes. It's yeah, not I mean, 20 minutes. Maybe a little. 
You don't even know no, my schedule. Allah, these it days is it is a very good experience, and you Until Friday. You get the whole night diversity. But, but it's not gonna be almost. It's gonna be one count. Yeah, I know, but oh, I mean, we're saying yeah. you're right. Yeah. So the day, she, the night she's coming, we're not even gonna. Inshallah, be Saturday night too. Inshallah. But you know, um, what I do want to say is like every Ramadan before I would I would spend the last ten days in Dallas at my cousin's house, and I would you know miss Hop and Epic and Roots and Valley Ranch, and it's different from here. You know, it's a lot different from here, you know, where our Masakit are usually, well, the ones that I went to are, are mostly like Yemeni. And like you said, very tutorial, like, the, you know, everybody has their Masakit. So that's, that's the only reason why I said So that. can I tell you one thing about Dallas? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I've said this right in front of them. I said, you know, Michigan, صح, we have our challenges. There's pros mm-hmm. and cons. But we are a rich old community. Like people, subhanAllah, know each other. It's, it's mm-hmm. an old community. Our parents know each other. There, for me, personal relationships can never be replaced. And you can see it. And if I go to Hamtramck, they say, Harak, Walad Muhammad. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. I love the richness. I love the simplicity. Um, even Ummah or other places. I think that when people give salam, it's genuine and there's a personal connection. It's beyond mm-hmm. the Shaykh. I think Shaykh comes and goes. That's true. But the idea that people have a personal relationship with someone. If it requires that you yell at them sometimes, then you have to. I feel uh, that was absent in Dallas. That's true. Because people come in, and there's a lot of there's a lot of buzz. Everyone's excited. There's a lot of youth. But if you're looking into building personal relationships with the person that's teaching you or the person that's there, that you it's far more difficult than here. I I think that it's just true. something that kind of we were blessed with, though. You know, like it's not something that. Like I, I understand why Dallas is not like that, and it's gonna probably take a while till it's like that because people are just starting to move there. Versus us, we kind of all got thrown, Subhanallah, in one city, and it was a very small city, so it made everything very more personal. And even Dearborn is feel the same way, by yeah. the way, too, yeah. uh, about their masagid as well. So, definitely a uh, interesting take right there. You know, you're gonna get mad, by the way, but yeah, you know, they end up. I mean, that. it's true, and a lot of people do come in from out of state, so it's very hard to make those personal connections, and it's so packed. Like yeah. crazy pack. Hundred percent. So we are entering night, I believe, twenty four, twenty four day twenty three, or is it uh, night twenty three day twenty two? Uh, it's one of those two. No, um, it's, it's it was day it was night twenty three. Yes, last well, night. Yeah, so yeah. it's night twenty four, day twenty three of Ramadan. Uh, what makes these last ten nights of Ramadan special and significant in Islamic tradition? So, you know, for those that may not know, these last ten nights, what makes it so significant? So, so there's a lot of things uh, to be mentioned, but I would rather um, go on and, and mention a few points that may be relevant to the audience and everyone that's listening than just speaking about the significance of the last 10 nights. So one thing you notice in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the importance of discipline. Islam has never taught us just to be comfortable, like engage with spirituality where you're on cloud nine and you feel good about yourself. And in the absence of that emotional state, you're no longer engaged. Sam doesn't believe in that. Sam says, how much can you control yourself? Um, how much discomfort can you experience? And you know, maintain your balance, maintain your imam as you embark on this journey. So the Prophet وسلم, before Ramadan was known to do a list of acts of worship. Like he would consume himself day in and day out. And everything we have in our tradition were things that the Prophet وسلم, engaged in before Ramadan. When Sha'ban comes in, which is a month before Ramadan, his form of discipline was noticed. It was like, how much can you do? How much were you doing? And how much can you add where your closest companions noticed that you did more? So it was obvious. So Sha'ban, he would fast more. He would pray more. When Ramadan would come in, the Sahaba noticed even more. So it was noticeable. Keep in mind all the ahadith. I, I can list so many ahadith of how long the Prophet's prayer uh, was and how long it would take him to pray one prayer. So for him to do that before Ramadan, imagine what would it take for the Sahaba to know that his prayer was different in Ramadan. Mm. So the first days of Ramadan, they noticed a change. The Prophet ﷺ was so unique. The last 10 nights, they noticed also his uniqueness in ibadah. It's like, so how much can you do before Ramadan, then Sha'ban, and then the first 20 days, and then the last 10 nights? If anything that we learn from this is that how can we teach ourselves 
um, again, how to be motivated, how to stay strong, how to remain steadfast, and all of that brings about discomfort. It has never been easy. And if, if people expect that, you know, going to the gym is, is, is hard. Being consistent is hard. Um, um, being good, suppressing your anger is hard. Anything that brings a person closer to Allah has always been difficult. And this is why the reward is great. So, so the last 10 nights is part of that. So you find many people uh, are up throughout the night. People are going to the masjid. It's not easy because many of these people have work. And I always tell people the only, maybe the only, one of the only times where I, um, what's the best word? Not belittle myself, but I feel that a lot of the things that I'm doing is insignificant is when I see working people mm. up all night in the masjid. Because for me, I'll be honest, even though I don't sleep after Fajr, so it's hard for me to sleep after Fajr and I struggle, but at least I have that option for three hours. And to see youth that we may think we're here addressing and teaching and, and hopefully um, motivating, and they're already there all night and they have to wake up at seven to go to work. For me, it's just, I was like, subhanAllah, it's, it's just amazing to see that many people so dedicated. So, um, so Alhamdulillah, we're blessed, but it's all about just pushing ourselves to the max. Because for sure what happens after Ramadan, the motivation um, uh, decreases, everything decreases. So how can we then maintain a balance with just, just maintaining the basics, ibadah, so we increase before uh, in Ramadan to allow it to organically decrease after Ramadan. Great points right there. I, I like that and how you kind of broke it down with um, the significance of it and how you know, the Prophet Sallallahu um, basically he was preparing for it. Uh, leading up to those last 10 nights as well. So in those last 10 nights, uh, there's also something called Laylatul Qadr. You know, uh, can you tell us the significance of Laylatul Qadr? And, you know, tell us, I, I know there's a lot of hadiths out there about when it can land and, you know, maybe touch on that as well. So Laylatul Qadr, of course, there's different meanings. Laylatul Qadr means one of the meanings is the night of power. One of the meanings is the night of significance and honor, Qadr. So, so we say this person sahib qadr. This person is a, a person of honor. Uh, qadr also means tightness. So when someone is very tight in their finances, they say qudir qudir alayhi rizq. They're very tight. And, and subhanallah, all the meanings, linguistic, the linguistic meanings of qadr, all of it in the end ties together. So tightness because there are angels. Um, value because. It, it, Allah has honored these last 10 nights because the Quran was revealed in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Um, and, 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 and power, um, of course, because the angels descend on these, on, on these blessed nights. So the whole point behind the last 10 nights is to capitalize on a moment. Mm. So there are no clear descriptions when a person is asked to establish Laylatul Qadr. Everything was kept ambiguous for a reason. So, because we're not limited by time. Like, you know what? I'm only going to worship Allah one night and then neglect other nights. So these nights is just, it's, it's setting a lifestyle. And I'm maximizing my engagement in this ibadah to find myself ex to some extent um, um, consistent after the month of Ramadan. So there are just blessed nights and we're asked to do a lot of small ibadat on these nights because every ibadah is multiplied as if this, this act of worship uh, was performed in a thousand months or even greater than a thousand months. So we tell people, don't only just pray in the masjid. If you can make someone happy as if you've done it for 80 some years. Mm -hmm. If you can give someone salam and just be intentional about that salam, it becomes an act of worship. If you can greet your parents, it's an act of worship. You can greet your siblings, it's an act of worship. So it's not what people somehow culturalize Islam. I'm going to go to the masjid, just pray all night and leave. It's not about that. It's about maximizing on that night and, and bringing awareness to the things that we may have neglected. And the masajid happened to be one of them, not all of it. And, um, That's a great point. And, and I, I believe if people were intentional about these acts of worship, uh, we, will, we will eventually see the fruits of our actions, not only with Allah, but we will see them here in this world of how we can impact people. So it, it's just about capitalizing, minimal capitalization on ibadat. I know it's going to be hard to answer, but when, you know, I keep hearing the word intentional. Um, like, obviously, the only way someone will know it's intentional is, is, is really within themselves. But, like, how important is it that everything that you're doing is with intention? 
You know, like what if you're just doing stuff just to do stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like, so are you are we saying that that would not count or not count as much, or how does that work? Because I keep hearing the word intentional. Hundred percent. In- intention is everything. Mm-hmm. Again, y- y- the way it's framed nowadays, if you don't have intention, your amal is not accepted. Your actions are not accepted. It's not only that. There, there's a process of intentionality in Islam. So there's something called niya. Niya means intention. It, it doesn't mean anything. It, it, like it doesn't have any religious significance to begin with. Just niya. Niya is, I have the niya to eat. I'm hungry. That's niya. The second stage is ikhlas, which is I am doing this act for Allah. So you need both. And these two are there for a reason. Because when you and I are intentional, or all of us are intentional about our acts, our level of performance is different. Okay, so if I come here and I'm just here just to talk and to leave, or I can come here and say salamu alaikum because the way I say salam may make someone feel better. So I'm intentional about that. And, and, and this is the only way for a person to see the fruits of their actions, is that if it's, if it's accompanied with, with intention. And, and this is why if you sleep with good intentions, you get the edge of praying all night. Why? Because it, it's a mindset. You're just mindful of Allah. And, and this is why Ramadan is so important because Ramadan is all about bringing that mindfulness. Like, this is why we're fasting all day. So all day you're reminded of why you're doing what you're doing. So now if I walk into a place and someone upsets me, I'm aware of myself. I'm aware of my responses. If I'm nice to someone, then I'm, I'm aware of why I'm being nice. I'm not just being nice because they can befriend me or uh, they can talk to me. I really want them to feel better. And how many times have you walked into a masjid and someone didn't greet you well? Mm. Or not greet me at all. Or not, that's even worse. Yeah. You know, or not greet you at all. Imagine if someone greeted you knowing that by doing so, I'm getting ajr just by saying salamu alaikum. I'm uplifting someone that can be down. I'm showing love to someone that may may not be receiving love at home. Um, like you can address so many ibadat just by giving salam. Or I can just say salam. Like I just, I said salam. But is that why salam was intended? So intentionality is everything. It literally changes. I always tell people, you do so much in your life, it's just you're not intentional about it. Mm. So we say, I have to be in the masjid to be a worshiper. No, you can be a worshiper on the court. Just, you know what, I'm going to go in and this is for my physical well-being. Hmm. Okay, the Prophet Sallallahu said, hmm. you have to give yourself some time and you have to give Allah your, some time and you have to give your family some time. This is part of my self-time. Um, okay, I, I am being, um, I, I am catering to my physical needs because I need to run, I need to exercise. Everything that you've done from the moment you left your house until the game came to an end, you were in a state of ibadah. But now if I'm in a state of ibadah, I have to be mindful of my words. So I'm not going to curse. I'm not going to... What if I did curse? Or what if someone did curse? Does that mean that you're like the whole ibadah got lost? No, or not really. Okay. It's just, it's not that impact. The, the whole point of ibadah is impact. Yeah. So if I'm not seeing... Like I always tell... Okay, like in... What is... Let me out. Can I ask you all? I'm talking to you. I'm lecturing here. What's up? I, know, I, I, love, it. I love it. I love it. No, no, I love it. There's so huh? many times where I wanted to add and you just... Let's yeah, like I feel question. like I'm just talking. I, I told you this Okay, so happen. wait, what's the question? I'm learning. Okay, I, okay, I'm I have, learning. It's, like, it's, like, it's a Umar and... Uh, yeah, like, and time what's to take advantage of this I was about to give like another khutbah right now. I was like, well, Shuhada, why am I here? Okay, uh, I should have just been at Umar and just give this whole talk there. <laughs> you did a live stream. I um, actually mentioned that to you. I was like, if you want me to come over there. No, no, I'm just joking. Um, So what are the objectives of doing good? Just spiritually. No, we're not talking about all oh, making people feel good. and No, no. To please Allah. Yes. Uh, okay. Th- there has to be some more details. Like based on sunnah. This is based on tradition. That, that's the ultimate goal to please yeah. Allah. I think personally that akhlaq is, is very important. So like making sure that I'm doing good internally and like emotionally so I could do good physically. Okay. So that's... You're talking about... So my question is your relationship with Allah only. So ibadat that you do on a personal level. Akhlaq is a whole, and it's something that we need to address for like mm. even years. Mm-hmm. So it's different. But just the fruit of like what's the benefit or what is the ultimate objective of your, just, your, your ibadah to Allah only? Leave people alone. 
تقع حسنات I mean تقول قلنا حسنات is one okay okay I thought it was being selfish no you're answer. right okay <laughs> okay number two the elimination of sayat mm-hmm. because every hasana removes a sayat which is a bad deed so a good deed and a bad deed number three Allah raises you in the ranks mm-hmm. the fourth one is what people lack which is intentional transformation. Every ibadah should make you a better person. So how many people have walked into the masjid and walked out sometimes even worse? Mm. But you're defeating the whole purpose. When Allah speaks about salah in the Quran, He says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَتَنَعَ عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ That salah protects you from animalistic behaviors and it allows you to control yourself. But I just prayed and I walked out as a worse person. Like I'm worse than what I was walking in. It means salah did not play its role. Like siyam, we're fasting, right? The Prophet, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that رُبَّ صَائِمٍ There may be a person that's fasting that gets nothing from their fast but thirst and hunger. Why? Because there were no fruits. If you can't control yourself, if you can't suppress your desires, if you cannot to some extent control your emotions, control your sight, control what you're listening, then you, you, you defeated the whole purpose of fasting. Does Islam tell, tell people just to give sadaqah? Is that the end goal? That I'm just going to give, I'm going to help someone by giving them charity. No, it's not. That's not the end goal. And this is why Islam focuses on the how before the charity. Mm-hmm. Because if your charity will belittle someone in the process, just don't give it. Mm-hmm. Because you're causing more harm. So Allah says, لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى Do not corrupt your charity. So you're given. But that's not the point. It's not about just giving. It's about preserving life, honoring someone, making them feel good, and supporting them emotionally as you're supporting them financially. He says, never follow your charity by bringing it up or belittling the receiver. Mm. So Islam is so beautiful because, again, it goes back to the first point. It's all about discipline and self-awareness, that you're constantly holding yourself accountable. And I end with this point that to the extent where some people would even talk to themselves in the process, it's not about being insane. It's about, okay, what language um, was used when I communicated with, with Umar? Okay. okay, why was my tone high at a moment where it was, just, it was unnecessary? Okay, did I say something about that person and crack the joke and try to be funny? But you, you won the audience but lost a person. Mm. You know, so, so that's what mindfulness does and ikhlas does in niyyah. It's just you're always mindful of your actions. Beautiful. Did you say you wanted to say something and I stopped you from saying something earlier? Or? I mean, and now it's not on the tip of my head. Okay. I, I'll make sure I'll touch you. I'll touch yeah, you. my bad. Yeah. Uh, first of all, this is beautiful so far. Uh, this has been a great conversation so far. It's a great time to run a quick another ad so that the sheikh can get a quick break because he's been talking more than he probably expected I'm for good. his first 20 minutes. Uh, so shout out to Qahwa House. Uh, we're going to give a shout out to Qahwa House and then we're going to keep things rolling. So shout out to Qahwa House, Yusuf. You know, if you're ever in need for some coffee, then you have to stop by the best place in the country. You know what that is, Yusuf? Yeah, man, it's got to be the Qahwa House. It's definitely the Qahwa House. It's the first Yemeni coffee shop of its kind. You can stop by Qahwa House to try their famous Yemeni lattes, Adeni Shahis, Mafawar, and Jubini coffees. You can also stop by to try their delicious pastries, such as the Nemini favorite sabaya, everything mini bites, and they even serve sambusas. They have locations in Michigan, New Jersey, New York, and Illinois, with more locations coming to a state near you. So no matter where you're at in the country, be sure to stop by Kahwa House and get a glimpse of what the Yemeni culture is all about. Also, don't forget to download the new Kahwa House app. You can now order your coffee and go. Skipping the line entirely. It's like having your own personal barista. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to ask this question because um, we need to switch it up. So before I ask the question, I just recently, I was at the Masjid, and then in between our Taraweeh, like it is a little lecture, and he talked about a story of this beautiful woman at the time, and everybody wanted to marry her, but she had certain, um, you know, re- re- le- prerequisites or whatever. She wanted a person to pray all night. She wanted a person to fast every single day. She wanted the person that read the Quran every single day, the whole Quran. And everybody was like, okay, she's crazy. No one could really do that. This one man was like, he can do it. And then they were all surprised. They got married. (laughs) She noticed the next day he wasn't doing that. And so she wanted to get a divorce and they go in front of the judge. I'm like rushing this story. I don't know why, but I'm rushing it. You probably heard it obviously before. 
Um, so they go in front of the judge, and then there was the problem, and she said he lied. He said he did this, this, and this, and he didn't. And then the judge looked at him and was like, um, do you sully um, throughout the night? Or no, first, uh, do you read the whole Quran? He's like, yes, I do. Rasulullah said, if you read Surah Al-Khlas three times, as if you read the whole Quran. And they're like, okay, if, um, you know, he was like, okay, then do you assume every single day of the year? And he's like, yes, if you assume Ramadan and you follow it by the six, you know, after, you know, it's as if you're suddenly, the, I'm sorry, some the whole year. And then they're like, well, if, you know, you're not praying all night or whatever. And he was like, if you suddenly uh, give Isha and give you know, Fajr, whatever, um, it's as if you, you know, were up the whole night. And then, you know, obviously the judge was like, nothing is wrong, go home, whatever. But it's just a story. But then there's the hadith in there. How much of this is true, or what can what do you um, recommend? Some acts that you recommend, you know, a month of Ramadan specifically, <laughs> or even the last ten nights. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like See, embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you put him on a spot right now because like say something. <laughs> you're not gonna get upset, right? No, no, I won't get upset. You know, some people try to like rile up people's emotions. I, I'm not like that. Okay. I, I think, I think it's you have to equally speak to their heart and minds. Right. Right, so the hearts and minds together. Like, like in the end, this guy lied. You know, okay, the court is a different case, but you know what she wanted. She wanted you praying all night. Of course, she was wrong to ask all that. Like, it's, it's not. It's, it's just unreal. But um, is there truth? I think, it's a good story. No, no, it's not. I think yeah. the the story behind it is that Islam is easy. We make it hard, you know, and Allah just wants us to like. There's you know, so many little perks that we could, 100%. you know. You know. So yeah. So my point is that. Can I say? Can I? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. think that story was necessary to prove that point. Okay, okay. but I'm, like, I'm gonna okay. tell you this point. This much. It did motivate me to salli gama and the with my son for Asha and Fig. Really? Yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah. That, that's so what that's what, what it did. And I, w- the, haven't I told you guys the story? Yeah. yeah. I've been pushing it. I'm like, you guys. It's as if you prayed the whole night. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's a hadith. You know, so yeah. that, there is a hadith that says, Man fi jama- If you pray Isha and Jama'an, then you pray Jira, so And then when you stay until Duha, it's as if you did Umrah. Yes, 100%. And, hajj, and I do that too. And I'm telling you guys, we're missing out. Just saying. I've been telling them, well, this is, that's the one thing that I've added this year that I think that, number one, I want my son to love the Mizgid and, and go to the Mizgid. I already told him if he wants a car when he's 16, he has to promise me he's going to sell the Fajr and Isha and the Mizgid. That's my, that, that's my only, like, you know, during so, Ramadan or all year? No, all year. As much as he can, unless something happens where he can't. Like, you know, in- inevitable or whatever. But if we're at home, he can do that. That's okay. something that he can do. I respect that. But, um, well, see, I was going to say something, but you you looked at but, me. Why, you yeah, yeah, don't blame me, but go ahead. Are you going to say something? <laughs> yeah, though? go ahead. Sheikh. So, again, I- I- Islam is very unique. And, and it's very simple. I feel the more someone knows about Islam, the more they appreciate it. Yeah. Like I shared, um, like this is just like a side note before the simplistic things, like just to show you like how many of these exist as we recite the Quran that we just overlook. There are so many simple things that Islam takes, you know, that Islam truly appreciates. So I was reading the ayat of divorce, and I teared up. It's the first time in my life I was like, divorce for taraweeh, someone that's been leading taraweeh for like twenty three years, twenty four years. It's, it's. When you come to ask a divorce, you change your voice. Why? Because for many people, it's irrelevant. Because these are just laws. You know, so when you're reading laws in taraweeh, you're just like, let me pass by quick. Because people, don't, people can't cry listening to... And if you divorce your spouse, give them their mahara. It's just very dry. What hit me in this ayah is that Allah spoke about someone that performs just a aqd. Just a aqd. So they just initiated the marriage contract. It was performed. And the only and there was a set amount, which is a gift. There was a set amount that was agreed upon. And the only thing that happened after the aqd is that we may have, say, walked behind the curtain and we hugged each other. That's it. Nothing. And, and Allah says, قَبْلَ أَن تَمَسُونَ Before you even touch them. So there was nothing intimate about anything that happened. It's very simple. Because that happened and and there was some moments of privacy like seconds you have to give her half of her mahr you have to why because that was so sacred you may think it's not simple you like you you may think it's simple i'm sorry you may think oh no it's nothing wushu haza why am i gonna give her so it says because of that moment and because you were accepted in this marriage 
and to be part of this family and you were given such honor, half of the mahr, gone. And I was like, subhanAllah, how Islam looks at these things and, and, and pays it. And, and, and when I read that, I was like, this Quran has to be from Allah through the Prophet. Like, it's impossible that you're trying to build an Islamic state and you care about meeting someone behind the curtain and coming back. There's no time for that. It's like even for us, yeah, Ummah, if you're just trying to do um, like j just a simple organization, this is so simple. Like in, in, in the scheme of things, we're nothing compared to what's happening around the world. And you're so bothered, like you do this, you're into this and this. The Prophet is building a state, but he's asked to focus about something so simple. So that was just when we're talking about simplicity. But Islam, subhanAllah, the ulama say something so profound. They, they say that what takes you into Jannah are the minors and what takes, you, what takes someone into Allah's wrath are the minors. Just the minors. Why? Because the major good deeds are overlooked. Well, the, the major good deeds are always visited and the minors are always overlooked. Because we, 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 we perceive them to be insignificant. But those those minors are the things that you can consistently do. Yeah. But you just already dismiss. So we say, okay, I can't wait till I go Umrah to make Tawbah. Why not just do it tonight and say Astaghfirullah a hundred times? Mm -hmm. That's equivalent. Umrah is but, but rewarding. With your fully intent to... A hundred percent. But it's simple. But we set these obstacles that the only time I'm going to do it is when I have to book a ticket, book hotels, go to Saudi, do my Umrah, and somehow I'm accepted. And so it's always the minors. And then the minor bad deeds because we think of them to be minors. But then these minors become addictions and eventually they become majors. So it's always the minors that we overlook. And you know, in Islam, if you ask people, um, when does Allah forgive me? If you're sincere in your tawbah and you cried and you asked Allah for No. When you give someone salam, it's a form of forgiveness. Wow. It's a hadith. Just give salam. To, so if me and you shake hands, this is a hadith. By the time we take our hands off, our sins fall down. I should have held a little longer then. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's why we tell people, be intentional about your salam. So like, but like, what if you're going in for a hug? That's even better. Okay. But do, but do you get what I mean? Like some yeah. people that give me salam and they walk away, I literally pull them back, say, no, no, give a right salam. Even if they're, even if they're adults. I have to hold on a few more no, no, seconds. No, no, even if they're older, like you have to learn the art of salam. No, that's a great point. That's another great lesson. When you that. make sujood, your sins fall off. When you make wudu, every sin that was engaged in with your sight is washed away. So, so there's so many minors that I feel we overlook. And if we just did those minors, it's like even I'm going to end with this point when it comes to the, the question that you asked. When the Prophet was asked about how to repay, not Allah, but the blessings that we've been bestowed with. The Prophet Sallallahu said that for every joint in your body, you have to give a form of charity. Mm -hmm. So you have to give a charity. Whatever, the, and for us, and back then, their understanding of charity was, was, was wealth. Like whatever, whatever I can give to someone in need. And then the Prophet gives it a new definition. He says, every time you say SubhanAllah is a form of charity. So you're just appreciating Allah for all the blessings because the hadith mentions 360 joints. 360, oh sorry, he says for every joint in your body, which ends up being 360 joints. He said every tasbihah is a sadaqah. If you say alhamdulillah, is a form of charity. If you, if you smile on someone else's face, is a form of charity. If you carry something heavy for someone, it's a form of charity. If you remove a harmful object, it's a charity. Hmm. Imagine how many ibadat we did just driving here. Just, and, and revisiting these minors, these minor ibadat. So it is simple and beautiful. And that's when you appreciate Islam the most. I think like the biggest thing is to, you know, especially during Ramadan and after, is to, to build that taqwa first. That understanding of, you know, you fear Allah, but fear Him in a way where you don't want to disappoint Him. So being mindful of your actions, your everyday actions, to avoid, you know, the smaller sins, like you said, that can be consistent and we don't even realize. What's your understanding of taqwa? My understanding of taqwa is that's the first kind of level that you have to pass to, to hopefully get into um, ihsan. So to me, taqwa is like, you know, understanding that um, that Allah is, is there and that you have to obey Allah and that, you know, yeah, basically Allah is there and you have to obey Him. 
and fully filling in your heart. You're, you're mm-hmm. testing me. I feel like I'm getting tested. No, wait, you're next, so you gotta get ready. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, a, I'm nodding my head because I yeah. agree with her. And I would have I would have said something like added on to it. So whatever she said, I agree. Taqwa for me is believing before seeing. You know, uh, I think that's the most important thing is you, 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 you know, you have taqwa and you have to actually believe in everything that was, you know, that you are learning about before you actually see it. Like, you know, truly they say, believing. Taqwa Allah, you yeah. know, like, understand that Allah is there, basically. Like, yeah. no doubt. Like, anything that you're asking for, any abad you're doing, you know that, like, Rabbi is watching and accepting it, in a sense. Mm. Can, I give you, can I give you all, like, a simple definition yes, of taqwa? Sure. sure. You're never going <laughs> to forget? Help us out. Taqwa means no. Oh, things that you can't do. No. Hey man, I think oh. I've seen a real with you saying that, man. I just yeah, say this. Yeah, just add more no's to your life. Oh, you said that during the. Um, yeah, the, like, but, that, but what that's what taqwa. So if I want to look at haram, it's a no. Okay. If I want to say something and respond aggressively and disrespectfully, no. Mm-hmm. I want to raise my voice, no. That's why we're given a whole month to do it because it's so hard to say no, especially when it comes to our desires, especially when it comes to haram. So we're given a complete month to develop a system because uh, taqwa is a system of, of protection. So some people, when they talk about taqwa, they talk about the end goal. That you fear Allah. And then when you fear Allah, it means you're free from flaws and mistakes. It's just, sorry, sorry but we have Islam like flipped upside down. Mm. And we, we just set the impossibles. And taqwa... It's not about you falling, it's about how you getting how do you get back up. That's what makes taqwa so unique. Okay, how do you respond to a sin makes you a muttaqi. It doesn't mean you are free from sin. Mm-hmm. And and Allah mentions that. He says he, he, he gives like uh, the characteristics of the muttaqin, very clear description in the Quran that they give in times of ease, times of difficulty, they suppress the anger, they forgive and they're good doers. All that makes sense. And then he says, fahisha, and those who engage in major sins or they've wronged themselves, Allah. they remembered Allah. So it's about developing a system of how to respond to Allah upon engaging in wrong. Like another ayah Allah says, Inna taqaw, which is the muttaqin, those whom are conscious of Allah, mm-hmm. if, they're, if, 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 if they experience a cloud in their judgment, they can no longer see. And that's what happens when one indulges in their desire. If you tell them later, do you regret it? Yeah. Do you feel bad about it? Yeah. But at that moment, they were just intoxicated by that desire. He says, um, They remembered Allah. So it's not about the absence of falling or the absence of sinning, but it's about how to get back up and how to respond to Allah after engaging in wrong. So Ramadan is about figuring that out. Yes. So a person doesn't give up. So when you fall, you have a whole system of how to get back up. And it really goes. Um, can I share a story? Yeah, of course. This is a real story. It's about it's about remembering. And I've shared this multiple times, so people, you, know, you guys may have heard it, but it, it's affected me and how I give advice too. So this guy came to me, and he was an alcoholic. He was addicted, and he suffered from it. And he came. He's like, I know I shouldn't be doing this, and it's very harmful. Has given me nasiha, but everyone that has given me nasiha has given me a long list that I just can't practice. Mm. Pray qiyamul layl, fast, be this, do this. He said, you're asking me to be a monk. Like, I just can't. I want, I wish I can go to the masjid all day, but I can't. And then the sheikh told him, read one juz a day. He said, come on, ya akhi, I just can't do that. And subhanAllah, I remember I was like, ya Rab, you know, this guy is basically giving me all the impossibles. Like, he's ending my my way of sharing advice because he's telling me don't give me anything religious okay so what else can I share with the guy if he's already telling me these are the things that you can't use when providing uh, counsel and then I'll give you something then I took the Quran I said before I give you my advice you have to put your hand in the mushaf and he said Ya Allah whatever Masmari says I'm going to (laughs) take and I said but believe me that I won't do I won't make it difficult on you and I won't use the strategies that were used. So be at ease. I was like, can you, can you trust me in that? Before telling you. He said, are you sure it's not salah? I was like, wallah, it's not. And I said, it's one and it's easy. And I said, you can do it in a second. He put his hand in the mushaf. And... Can I guess? What is it? Astaghfirullah. 
No. Oh. I said, say Bismillah before you drink. Mm. Mm. Oh. I said, before you drink, just be mindful of saying Bismillah. Mm. <laughs> That's deep right there, yeah. man. And subhanAllah, that person never drank. And he also graduated from a Sharia school. Like oh, his okay. life wow. from that little Bismillah that can I get think. A, can we get a yeah, round of applause? Yes, definitely. That's the crowd. The crowd didn't really know what to. <laughs> <laughs> so it just shows you how that's what taqwa does. It's just that simple deed that reminds you. Uh, Brother Bilal was on the show about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Bilal and Al Qadri, I think you know him. Yeah. Uh, it says, please give my salams to Shaykh and tell him I miss him. So Thank you. I miss you too, uh, Bilal. You need to come to Ummah. There you go. Call, come on Friday for a yeah. qiyam. <laughs> it's not at Ummah, it's yeah. at Wayne. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Saturday. I worked with him, so. Okay, okay. So, to he needs to come tonight. Yeah, very, very great guy as well. So, uh, I want to just add on to what you said a, a lot earlier. But, um, you know, when you were saying how, like, people, you know, do haram and they think they could just, you know, do well, you didn't say that part, but some people do haram and they think that oh, well, I'll just say um, subhanallah alhamdulillah 10 times, 100 times, and now I'm forgiven. And then they keep doing haram. And I was earlier and I was telling him, like, but they have to really, you know, sincerely repent for that to work. Um, it just reminded me of like, you know, Ahl Quraysh who would do whatever they would want because they did, they did believe in Allah, but they also had their idols and did whatever they wanted to do and would do whatever they want. And then they would just throw from the the Kaaba and they would be like, okay, I'm, I'm forgiven. So we can't have that mindset as well. You can't fool God. Yeah. You can fool a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> you can't fool God. Go. Part of Toba is that you regret the sin and you plan to never do it. Yeah. So the Toba that is done, which is a repentance that is done with the intention of performing the same act the next day, is called the Toba of Yusuf's brothers. Mm. Yusuf alayhi salam. So they plan this in the Quran. They plan to do Toba after they kill him. So that's not that's not accepted. Mm. That Toba is not accepted. So um, so if someone plans, if someone repents and plans to do the same sin, that Toba is not accepted. But if someone plans to change and they do Toba and they fall into the same sin, doing what they can to prevent themselves from falling, then that Toba is forgiven, even and accepted, even if they did it a million times. Mm. As long as at that state of Toba, I intend to never return and I regret the previous engagement. Islam is also, so we, we, there has to be a balance. We shouldn't be too tough. We shouldn't be too easy. It's all about, again, intentionality. What's your plan when you're asking Allah? If you're playing games with Allah, then it's just, it's the wrong thing to do to, to begin with. So let me ask you this question off of that one. All right, I know this is a hard one uh, and don't want to hold you up too long. Why, why do you I scare me every time you say it's a hard one? He, it's does a hard this, he, he does this all the time. I, I already do that. He always does this. I don't know why. His and it's, not like I don't, it's not even like I mean <laughs> to do it either. So let's say someone was very intentional and they cried and they, you know, they were very intentional and in, in asking for forgiveness. And then they may have relapsed a year or two down the line. Does, does the forgiveness get washed away or does it like you just back to square one and then you get... You know, basically, it's it's against you at when the moment that you pretty much relapse or something like that. No, the forgiveness that happened then stands, but now it needs to be the the, the toba has to be revisited. Okay. You know, one, one thing that we need to know: Allah is not like Omar, Muhammad, Sarah. Allah is Allah is Allah, and He Allah does not go by our rules. So if someone was bad to me and then did good for two years and then rela you know went back like this person was lying throughout that's how we deal with things mm -hmm. yeah. and that's why Allah never gives us authority right because we have very limited judgment Allah says beautifully in the Quran قُلْ لَوْ كُنْتُمْ تَمْلِكُونَ خَزَائِنَ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكُمْ إِذَا لَأَمْسَكْتُمْ خَشْيَةَ الْإِنْفَاقِ that say if you were given the treasures of Allah's mercy you would have preserved it for yourself fear of poverty mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, Umar treated me bad today. I'm only going to give you 0.2%. You're not worthy of 1% of Allah's mercy. Allah says, because we function in such matter, uh, manner that Allah kept mercy to Himself. We're not worthy of controlling Allah's mercy because the way we'll distribute it is based on our emotions and feelings mm. and how we perceive people. So Allah is different. You sin, you have that, you do tawbah, it's gone. And Doubting Allah's forgiveness upon 
engaging in tawbah is bigger than the sin that was performed. Mm -hmm. And this is why they say in Hajj, everyone is forgiven. The moment you ascend, um, or sorry, you, you descend from the mountain, so they ascend in the beginning of the day, in the end they descend from, from the Mount of Arafat. The, everyone is forgiven except one person. And that's the person that doubted Allah's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a sin. So even if someone went back and had, as long as they know the doors of Allah are open, and once they perform Toba, there's again, it goes back to the intentionality, and they're good. Who, who am so I to I, limit Allah's mercy? I'm going to say something's probably wrong because I hear stories. I know there's a lot. I don't, inshallah. Looks like, like you like stories, me. by the way. I do. Like, for me, that's when I connect. I'm a okay. teacher. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So, you know, I feel like that's how I connect. <laughs> <laughs> when they're saying that, you know, would your mother throw you into the fire? Yeah. You know, obviously. That's no. a hadith. Yeah, yeah that's a hadith. There you go. But I don't know the exact hadith. I don't know the exact name. So I, I hear this stuff and I remember it, but I don't know the exact. Um, I should, I should learn them and, and try to. But anyway, so would your mother throw you into the fire? No. So Allah, like, I don't know how many times more loves you more than your mother. So don't, you know, be afraid of Allah not forgiving you or not loving you anymore. Or just in that aspect. Can you explain that better? I'm sorry. You messed them up. He so just quiet. gave an example of what he quiet. said. That's well, 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 no, well, like he did. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. She just had to like add on to what you just said about. I read much so much, but I just can't keep it the right way. You know, I always tell people, knowing that Allah is merciful is not unique. Mm. Okay. That's where people fall. They say oh, Allah is the most merciful. If I came to your house, and I told you all, "Wakt al futur," I'm hungry, and I have nowhere else to eat. Can you just give me something and please don't tell anyone I came and I have no money. Would you feel sorry for me and have rahmah towards me? Yeah. Of course. I think you would. Yeah. So people have that rahmah to begin with. And Allah, of course, has it on a different scale, but it's rahmah. What makes Allah so unique is that Allah is capable of showing mercy. Allah, Allah is capable of forgiving. Forgiving doesn't affect Allah. So knowing that Allah is Qadir is more Allah is powerful. Allah Allah is great. So he when he forgives, it's not because he's the sin brings about harm, nor your ibadah brings about benefit. Allah forgives because he forgives and he's capable of forgiving. This is what makes Allah so unique is that it's not based on our standards of showing mercy. When Allah wants to show mercy, he shows it in his own way. And when he forgives, he forgives. And there's no one that can hold them accountable. And this is why I always tell people, just have your relationship with Allah. Stop having these middle people mm -hmm. that, that dictate how a relationship with Allah should be. When Allah, some people come, even they come to me, they say, you know, it looks like you, you talk about spirituality. What is your best method? I said, why, why do you think my method is going to work? Mm -hmm. Maybe I have my own way. Some people, I'll be honest with all the crowd, I don't fast out of Allah. I can't. I'm not a fasting person. So why should I, like, it That's may not true. work for you. Let me erase this spirituality question that I have, by the way, that I was going to ask. So I was you gonna go <laughs> <ahead>. <laughs> I'm just saying everyone is different. So if, figure out what brings you closer to Allah and what allows you to connect to Allah. Of course, within the boundaries of Sharia, you can't just like come up with these own ways of performing acts of worship. But it doesn't mean that we, we're all the same in how we connect to Allah. Yeah, I think that's why there's so many doors of Ginnah. 100%. You know? So you can you like different that. avenues. Oh, that's, that's, that's a good one. I'll Finally, like man. I feel like I've been, it was like, hey, she, oh, she zero. Yeah, she's been trying. Oh, like, I'm trying to I get shut down. <laughs> no, I'm not going to shut. No more stories. Shut you down. No good. more stories. No, but Hold the on. episode with uh, Brother Bilal, you were, you were. I was doing all right. She kind of yeah. took over. Yeah. 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 So, as soon as I mentioned. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mentioned okay. Brother Bilal, so she thought that she going to get hyped by another. I don't take it. Listen, I am not perfect. We're all learning. We're all learning. I'm like, I'm saying this stuff so you can like correct me. No, Allah, you're good. Uh, that's a hadith about the mother. Yes. Yeah, Fahmi Hussein. I don't know if you remember Fahmi, Kona Cafe. Uh, oh, Fahmi's my older brother, man. So that's what he kind of mentioned. He said, Sam, Sheikh Muhammad, I watched this young boy grow up to be a very inspirational oh, said, man. Mashallah, very proud of him and uh, to know him. Listen, Fahmi is all of our older brothers. I, I love Fahmi from all my heart. Mashallah, he's a grandpa now, too, so we call him No, grandpa. he's still young. He's still balls. He's still good. No, so I'm not going to go with the grandpa. Yemeni's, no, grandpa's very soon. Yes. 
So, Speaking of balling, know. he said, "When are we hooping?" FYI, said, yeah. Sheikh Mohammed has game. He did, he did. <laughs> so he said, "You have, you have some." So whenever they invite the Miskini, you know, I'm not cool enough to be in their league. So yeah. whenever they get a chance to let me in, I'll, I'll come, inshallah. Well, trust me, they are, uh, they, they are struggling themselves, you know, <laughs> to say the least. You know, we had our Hamtramck versus Dearborn basketball game, and I was disappointed to find out that Hamtramck lost at home. Uh, in front of their own crowd, so um, Fahim is on they that. You trying team. to like beat us? You trying to like talk down? You make fun of us? Are, no, uh, I, I, listen, I, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm still I'm trying. You know, I mean, we, you know, we always had beef, Dearborn and Hamtramck. Yeah, yeah that's we why. Kids. So we were trying to, you know, we're trying to bring the communities together now with this game, and we get the mayors involved, Mayor Abdullah Hamoud, and stuff like that, and so. So Hamtramck lost. Hamtramck lost you know again. What? You know what I noticed a lot of. I'm, I'm not Dearborn command. Like I'm more really? representative of Hamtramck. Really? Okay, yeah, Alhamdulillah. yeah. So that's why we connect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, Dearborn, but um. I feel that uh Say it man he's like hey, we're, we're fasting <laughs> Let's just go on Let's <laughs> we're gonna speak to the last ad of today and then we're gonna go to the final third of the show. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give a shout out to Juice Box. Let's give a shout out to Juice Box. Speaking of him, Tramic, you know, so shout out to Juice Box and him a business and him Tramic. We appreciate Hakeem and all his support. So shout out to Juice Box. All right, Yusuf, I want you to envision this with me, okay? Imagine you just had a long day at work. And all you want is a nice, cool, refreshing drink to top it all off. Do you know where you stop by at, Yusuf? It's got to be Juice Box. It's definitely Juice Box. If you're looking for a place with the best smoothies, milkshakes, ice cream, cereal bars, and slushies, then Juice Box is your one-stop shop. You can try things like their Biscoff or Nutella shakes, crepes, watermelon blasts, strawberry burst, or mango smoothies. And if you're looking for a place to hang out, they have a comfortable outdoor patio slash courtyard area that you and your friends can enjoy while trying those delicious drinks. So be sure to stop by Juice Box. They have a Hamtramck location right there on Joso Campo with more locations coming soon. You'll be sure to leave there with a big smile on your face. You'll also be able to order your drinks from the new Juice Box app, which will also be coming soon. It will be downloadable on all of your smartphone devices. <laughs> Listen, we need to have a debate of who's the funnier brother because I think Sheikh Mohammed over here. Uh, yeah, you're not funny. Making me giggle. Yeah, listen, he's funny. low key funny. Like, there's different levels of funny, you know? Yeah. I think uh, he's goofy. Ab no, Abdullah's no, goofy. Yeah. Abdullah is the goofy one. Sheikh Mohammed is the one that he'll he'll say a joke and then it'll take you about a second to realize that that was a joke and then you start laughing like oh actually that was kind of that funny. That means I'm not funny then. Yeah. No, no. no, it's because we you come off as you know you're just sheikh. You know we don't know like whether to laugh or to. Yeah. You know. So shout out to Fahim. He said don't bring that up in front of the sheikh. He's talking about the basketball game. Uh, we appreciate you, sheikh. See, we th we think highly of you. That Thank we don't want to. But they need to put their phones down, get the youth together, play yeah. ball. Mm. You know, just 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 activate that in the community. People need to get in sports. There's nothing like sports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Allah. The Sheikh was just talking about how, you know, the, the younger generation is struggling with playing sports because their uh their level, their the level of where they're at is not where it probably needs to be. You can't be young and not play a sport. You just can't. Like I agree. It, it doesn't align. You have to be good in one sport and then play all the sports. Try like, them out and then no, no, you know you have to like know how to play them at least. You don't yeah. have to be very good. But there's one to two sports. That's what I loved when I was young. I know how to play hockey very good. Mm. Nice. Um, like I actively play like hockey. rollerblade hockey. Rollerblade, though, right? not, yeah. not ice. So roller yeah. hockey. So you, hockey, if it's um, football, I saw because just injuries. You just have to play. Like or the alternative is sit down and watch a screen. You know, so, back in the day, you'd walk drive down the street. There's kids playing everywhere. And nowadays, it's not like that. So. That is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I guess, can we talk about charity and dua? Maybe if you could wrap this up, because I, I don't want to hold you up too long. I know you got somewhere to go as well, and we're about to hit the whole hour uh, of the show so far. So charity and dua, advice during these last 10 nights of what, the importance of it, and maybe some advice of like how can someone give or you know say some specific duas that can benefit them the most. So again, these are um, two different topics. So l let's just start with charity. Charity, the, the Prophet Sallallahu said charity is a sign. Mm -hmm. Charity is a sign of faith Because sometimes people say Faith is in my heart Islam doesn't roll like that mm. You can't just say Islam is in my heart But it, Islam is not demonstrated It's like saying I love someone But I don't show them love You gotta put your money Where your mouth is Yeah you, uh, <laughs> That's the best way of putting it Put your money where your mouth is <laughs> And so, so Islam is, is all action oriented So you have to prove your faith And, and because I'm like Oh I love Allah in my heart um, that's not enough Even in a, a relationship If someone says I just love you But you say okay Then show that love 
demonstrate love. Um, so the Prophet said, as sadaqatu burham. Sadaqa is evidence that you believe in Allah's presence. You believe that Allah is a sustainer. You believe that Allah will give you back what you've given Him. You, you believe in the, in the blessings of, of giving. So it's... Um, Sorry for all the youth. I feel that this generation, the younger generation, is not a giving generation. Mm. And our institutions are going to struggle. Alhamdulillah, because I've been an imam for some time, I've lived with both generations. Like you, you put me in a group with a bunch of shayabat, old people, I'll make sure that they'll listen in the end of the gathering. Like we'll be very close. And then you sit down with youth. What makes them so unique is their dedication of giving. I think youth are very limited and to some extent they're very stingy. Yeah. So make sure that someone trains themselves just, just to give, even if it's a minimal amount. You go, you, you go to a masjid, even if they're asking for funds, and you may not fully align with what that masjid is doing, give them a dollar. Like the how much and the amount goes back to, to the need. But the giving should happen. Just get, get yourself used to giving, where money comes and goes. D don't hold on to it. Don't hoard it. Just khalas, I want to keep it for myself. So that's what Ramadan does too. It's just it's a month of, of giving. And uh, I've I've mentioned this more than once that I had a sheikh that, subhanallah, had nothing. One time, this is maybe one of the only azaim I remember in my whole life. You know, we go, we eat. Who cares? We leave. It's it's not like a big thing. That he invited us in Sanaa when I was a student, and he went in. He spoke to his wife. He came back out. He gave us moz, bananas. That was his lunch. Mm. I never forgot that lunch Never in my whole life I was like subhanallah He was able to give us What he had in his house And there was no takalluf There was like Oh Aib, I'm embarrassed What am I This is what I can provide And I go to his car And he has like a jar of coins You know Five riyal Ten riyal Those should equivalent to like a penny or less And And I said You know why do you have all these coins Because it's loud The car is shaking And it's just It's annoying When the jar moves he said, because Allah says, never reject the asker. Anyone that asks, never reject. Because us, we assume, oh, this person might buy drugs with it. This person might do this. We have all these assumptions and that lead us to our own personal conclusions. He says, Allah said, never reject. I'll assess the need, but I have to give. Mm -hmm. And subhanAllah, so everyone, every traffic light that we would pass by or a stop, and people come, he'll give them a five riyad. Five riyad. Because that was his, that was his budget to begin with. So just being in the habit of, of giving. And then dua, and I'll end with this one, dua. Many people think of dua as a begging session. And unfortunately when dua becomes a begging session, Allah becomes the means and not the goal. Mm -hmm. And this is why people are frustrated when their dua is not accepted. Because I want my dua, and Allah, you better make it happen. So Allah is like a tool. But when we look at dua as an act of worship, Allah becomes the goal. And whatever I am pursuing and whatever I'm asking for becomes a means. So if it comes, alhamdulillah. If it doesn't, alhamdulillah. It's not always like, don't be stuck on that thing. There's maybe, a reason why it wasn't. A hundred percent. Maybe so, sometimes that thing could have been the most destructive thing, regardless of your intentions. So say if, if my son came to me and said, Baba, I feel, or my daughter, <laughs> just because I'm just saying my son because guys are out there and they hear stuff. And he says, um, listen, when you're traveling, I want your gun. And if someone knocks, I want to you know, take out the gun and do what, whatever is necessary. Why do you want the gun? He, I want to protect the house. And I feel that I'm 14, 15. It's my responsibility to take ownership. Intentions are very noble. May Allah bless you. I love that you're thinking that far to defend your family. It's something to appreciate. How do I grant him his end goal? Which is peace, which is safety, which is security in the house, to deprive him, to deprive him from what he asked for. So I'm not gonna give him the gun because I want security in the house. It's, you're endangering, you're putting the family in danger by giving him that gun. Mm -hmm. So SubhanAllah, sometimes Allah may deprive us from something that we may have perceived to be the solution to our life but only Allah knows how destructive that matter could have been. So just allow it to happen. So we're not connected to the dua more than the one that we are calling. So that's just because dua is a whole topic. But I'm just telling you, 
Just allow that to be the means, not the end goal. So, <laughs> so recently I, I was listening to Amar Suleiman lecture and he kind of like transformed my idea of dot because they're going over the book. Um, I don't know the book name right now. I'm see, I, I, I miss parts, but it's okay. Regardless of the situation, he said uh, in the book it explained that that dua should be the salt to the food of your ibadah. So your ibadah should be number one. You should be focusing on making sure that you do the correct ibadah. And then, because if you have the right ibadah, you won't need to make certain du'as because Allah is already going to bless you because you're following mm. the what is meant for you to do. So du'a is like the salt. You know what I'm saying? On top. So, But when you're focused more on the du'a and you're not doing the ibadah, that's where you can't that's expect. Like, for example, like just making sure you're like thankful for what you have as well. Because that would be considered as No, make, making sure that you do what you need to do as a Muslim first. Yeah, just, like being thankful, for example. Well, that's one of the things, yeah. yeah. But this is more like making sure you sell, you do your, your obligatory salahs. And, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being thankful so. is a big thing, by the way. Mm -hmm. Big thank, uh, Being thankful is what allows you to discover the beauty of every other ibadah. Mm. So I, I know sometimes we overlook being thankful. Yeah. When the Prophet was asked that, how can you stand up all night? And your feet are swelling. Like you, it's obvious that you're suffering from your salah. He said, "Afala kunu abdan shakura." Should mm -hmm. I not be a thankful servant? So some people, when they talk about salah, they think number one, we're on cloud nine when we're praying. Like we're also suffering. There's thoughts. Mm -hmm. We have to fight ourselves. <laughs> like it, it, it's not what people think. You know, like someone that's leading somehow, Subhanallah, and I have all these thoughts. But th the way to overcome all of that and how to increase your khushu' when you talked about thankfulness is to go into the salah not thinking, oh, the angels are behind me and Jannah is on my right and Jahannam is on my left. It's like a whole movie. <laughs> You're just thinking that this is the least I can give Allah yeah. with everything that He's given me. This is the, the least I can give Allah is a ruku' with the back that I was blessed with. Yeah. This is the least I can give with my knees as I you know, prostrate or my feet. Once someone does that, every ibadah changes. Every ibadah changes. And that's why shukr is one of the most difficult ibadah. It's not as easy as people think. It's not only saying alhamdulillah, like the way people think. I, I say, I eat, I burp, say alhamdulillah. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's far more complicated than that. But that will transform someone that's struggling from, from the feel. For sure. Shout out to the Sheikh, man. Uh, I wish we could have you even longer because yeah, I think that right. we're just, you know, touching on these conversations, but we don't want to hold anyone up, especially, you know, with it being Ramadan. So we're going to move on to the final thing. We call this Motivate Me 313 Minute where we ask you to, you know, give someone advice about a specific thing. And today it's what advice would you give someone who may be struggling to connect with the spiritual significance of the last 10 nights of Ramadan? So what advice would you tell someone that's basically struggling to again take advantage of these last 10 nights um, my advice for them is just to show up at Ummah just come <laughs> show up it's all about showing up and the feel will come later just show up and uh, people are not asked to um, you know how long is it it's a one minute segment you no know, it doesn't have to be one minute okay so this is the last thing so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he <laughs> said for every person there is a peak and for every peak there's a downfall so many people think that this spiritual high that we experience at Ramadan is going to remain it's not true it's not going to remain he says for every for every person there's a peak which is now for every peak there's a downfall and then he says, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ إِلَىٰ سُنَّةِ فَقَدْ يَحْتَدَىٰ If someone's downfall meets the bare minimum of the Prophet's guidelines, then he or she are guided. Mm. So, the end goal for this person that's struggling from spirituality is to be in an environment that protects them from haram. Like, have you ever seen someone get up at a masjid, Dick's Masjid ICD, and start dancing in the, in the public? Mm. No. Why? It's a sacred space. That in itself is more than enough for a person where he or she are reminded of such space and such sacredness. That is more than enough. You don't have to be on spiritual high. So just, just being around the right environment, push yourself just to attend for the last 10 nights at a place where you're comfortable attending. AKA? Ummah. Yeah.
takbir. Allah Akbar. <laughs> Go ahead and give that a round of applause. Big Yus, appreciate you, Yusuf, as well. Yeah. Shout out to the Sheikh, man. We appreciate him for coming by here. You know, um, Jazakallah Khair for everything and, and just the, the wise words that some people can take away, inshallah, and hopefully benefit from the knowledge. Um, so first of all, I just want to say, before everybody says their final words, you know, follow us on all of our socials, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, all under Oz Media. You'll be able to listen to the show later on Apple and Spotify podcast under Oz Media. Follow the Sheikh and Ummah. Um, they're on social media as Umar, well. I don't have social media. So he doesn't have social <laughs> media, but um, he has a lot of uh, quotes that go on social media on the Ummah. Instagram page as well as YouTube page. Shout out to Uma. They but, do an amazing job. By the way, I appreciate that you insisting that I come. Like you're so patient. Like from last Ramadan, I think. I feel like I, yeah. And I'm a bad responder. Yeah. So forgive. <laughs> I feel very bad for being a bad. Anytime. Like, forgive is me. The bro. most consistent person I've ever met. Allah well, Allah. I'm like I'm just he will a bad keep responder. On it. That's why I tell people that once I say just pass by Uma, because I can't do the phone stuff. So Allah may Allah reward you. You've been Amen. pushing this for so long. You didn't give up. So, Thank you. And Appreciate honestly, it. I can definitely say this is probably one of my favorite episodes. Like, this was a very, very nice and flowing conversation. I learned a lot, so I appreciate it. Hey, so, we'll I'm, just just like, I'm just saying, she says that like it's like her seventh time saying this, so at least you're in the top seven for no, sure. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I believe her. I, believe. I, I, can, I can read someone. She said, no, for sure, genuine. man. That's a definitely a, most, a very beneficial conversation, and we appreciate you. And, uh, you know, it's funny that uh, I, I love. I was telling my wife this yesterday. I was like, man, I am so happy that, alhamdulillah, like with the, the show is that we've gotten to get to know people, but specifically, you know, getting to have Shaykh on the show and just kind of having them, you know, there in any time you may need them and, you know, get them on and just having a conversation. It's, it's a great feeling so to what, have. Wh- which Mashaykh came so far? Uh, well, we got Brother Bilal. I don't know if he's considered a Sheikh or an Imam. Uh, I don't know what category he uh, he's under as well. Um, it's a great question. You know, we have, I mean, I have Imam Imran. He's going to be coming as well. Uh, Muhammad uh, Ishtiaq. You know, these are all oh. people that I've already reached out to, so they're going to be coming on as well. I mean, it's been on uh, y'all it's shows. Been this, there's been three episodes. I don't remember. Um, my head, uh, but we had a divorce show. We had that one guy. Uh, what? Divorce show? Yeah. We had a show about divorce, yeah. Yeah, so we had to bring a sheikh on the show. Our brother Mahmoud. It was about, no, it was about. Um, Mikhail? Mikhail? It wasn't about divorce. It was Do you about, know Mikhail? Um, so uh, Dari. Like, um, Mahar? Mahar. What? Remember we had a show? We were on, you weren't there. Um, what was it we had, yeah. man? Because I wanted to do that one. That's a serious topic. What do you want? Yeah. I, we've been trying to get even Ali to meet me, but I think he's a little busy too. Oh, is that from uh, is he TIB? Can, he's yeah, I know he's just part of the yeah. team. Um, but nobody Ali, you just need to push Ali, you know. Uh, every single time. Oh, uh, we we do. Every I need to push time. him. Who ended You know, like Ali, come yeah, on, go on. So I, just need to I mean, their lines are. I, I'm, around, I'm so. drawing a blank. I've been up since three a.m. We had over hundred. I have not taken nap today, so you know, I'm so. already like. But you need to come back on. Inshallah, inshallah. More of like a, you know. It can be a, we make a deal. It, it can be a divorce thing. Or yeah. Something that's something. You know, that we had life. We had the show about life after, but we never had a sheikh about divorce. That would be good. And about dowry too. Like, I want to be a part to of. Be it. Honest, I need to understand. I, I think people, people will benefit from those sessions, because I feel like. The idea that you have some religious perspective, but also, you're dealing with the community, and you also have, um, like, basic skills of of say counseling and stuff like that like bring it together people do benefit in the end because divorce yeah. is, is happening yeah. and it's very unfortunate we need to get no, that I done would, then yeah and just know that an option and i don't know if this is our conversations you'd want to have at the ummah center but we can always you know it's not center by the way ummah. It's just ummah space space, 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 <laughs> space no it's not even ummah space just it's ummah, ummah. It's ummah. You know? sorry like um, be, be, because so when you say ummah then people know without saying center that's true it's, that is what, it's what, a marketing thing for? Uh, United. United Michigan um, uh, Muslim Association. Mm-hmm. So uh, just know that we can always come there if that's easier to have an in-person show too, where it's easier for you too. But whatever is easiest for you, you know. Oh. Um, but whatever works. With that said, uh, final words, final comments. Can we end the show with that? Okay. We're, we're asking you. Okay. Well, we'll have final <laughs> oh, words. Oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I kind of did it. Oh, earlier when I was one of that. favorite shows. And and when I said that with my favorite shows, a lot of the times I don't like to rewatch because I think. I'm cringy, but this is a show that I'd rewatch. Inshallah. inshallah. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. So that's when I know it's one of my favorites. Alhamdulillah. May Allah forgive me for my shortcomings. I mean. And any information that I did, that I said that was. No, Allah, you're a good donkey. 
I'm going to beat myself honest, up. Can I be honest with you? Yes. You threw me on that first story. Listen. He got married to her. The whole marriage is wrong because he gave her a wrong idea. No, but you but know, I'll let it go. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be critical. Idea. It's the idea of, um, oh my God, you know, I can't. Can we change the subject right I, now? I, 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 don't think, I don't think you understand how bad story. she's going to beat herself up about it. Uh, I, I have to tell this story. I'm telling man, I have to remember to tell I, this I was story. Waiting. I had to like filter out because this is a hadith. I was like, for sure, now this is not a hadith. Like, I'm trying to see. And then when you said, it's like they were like cute answers, but for for a real marriage, I was like, it, like that, I, that guy I, was so cute. He said, "Oh, I pray this," and, <laughs> but it's not true, you know. Like, was, that's funny. It's not true, so, but the idea of true, you know, just the idea it motivated you. That's all. Yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. Alhamdulillah. So um, it's funny. I mean, I got a couple of real options. We can go with the no. Funny we're not going to do my we my go role, funny no. route. <laughs> or we can do this his his um. Yeah, for sure. He had a couple. He had a couple. Yeah. I already, yeah, I looked at the time. I looked at the time every single time. You can break it up into like three. Yeah, every time he had something, I looked yeah. at the time just to make sure I know when to pull it out. But with that said, you know, I bet had a great point. Maybe if you can end this all with some, maybe some dua um, to end the show, that'd be great. In every corner English. Um, Hold on. I have a question too. You know, when you're listening to dua that's on, this is might be beneficial to everybody. I heard that if you you could only say amin if you're in person, if it's live, but if it's not live it's and not it's true. recorded, it's you true. can't. Okay. It's not true. Okay, that's that people way. overcomplicating. Okay, no. he said in Arabic or English. What do you guys? Doesn't think? matter. Whatever, whatever you, you prefer. Want. Whatever, whatever, whatever is easier. Just a few du'as. May, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept us. Ya Allah, forgive us for our shortcomings. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, alhamd, you have blessed us with 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 peace and tranquility, and we have people around the world whom are suffering oppression. Ya Allah, be with our brothers and sisters around the world, mm -hmm. and be with our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Ya Allah, bring ease to their pain. Ya Allah, cure. They're sick and accept their martyrs, Ya Allah. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, allow us to live by Islam and to die upon Iman. Mm -hmm. Allow us to live by the Quran. Allow us to love one another, work for one another, serve your creation. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, forgive us for our shortcomings. Allow us to overcome our addictions. Allow us, Ya Allah, to control our temptations and desires. Mm -hmm. And Ya Allah, allow us to drink from the blessed hands of the Prophet mm -hmm. Ya Allah, have mercy upon our parents. Forgive them if they've passed away, preserve them if they're still alive, and reward them for all their dedication and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Preserve our kids, preserve our kids, allow them to live by Islam and Iman. Mm -hmm. Preserve their Iman, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, never test us with their disbelief. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, never test us with their disbelief. Allow us to live the month of Ramadan, Ya Allah, with full acceptance and forgiveness. Ameen Allahumma, Ameen Jazakumullah Ameen. Thank you all for watching and listening. We hope that you enjoyed this show um, and benefited from some of the knowledge. Uh, again, thank you so much, you. Sheikh Muhammad Masmidi. Um, again, you Salam want. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. you guys are so you all so kind. I appreciate it. And if you want to see him more, make sure you go to Umma. Um, what's the location, by the way? The address? Uh, it's on um, Southfield, Thirteen Mile. There you go. Southfield Road. So. Again, and you can follow, look it up on Instagram. Um, Umma, uh, follow them. They do great work as well. So shout out to all those that are behind the scenes doing that work too. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all next time. And shout out to Yusuf, by the way, being in the back. We appreciate him as well. Uh, be safe and enjoy your last few nights and days of Ramadan.